Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is gonna be my Game of Thrones catch-up video before season six. So what I'm gonna do is go around the map of the world and talk about all the big storylines, where we left off, and where they're headed based on what we know from the trailer. So let's start north of the wall and we'll work our way around the map counterclockwise. So we'll go through Westeros first and then we'll go through the eastern storylines. So just careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far, and we'll be talking about stuff that happens in the trailer. So starting up way near Hardhome here, this is the last place that we saw the Night's King and his army. They're just going around grabbing all the wildlings they can, adding to their army. So if there's a dead body to be had, they are adding it to their army. Over here is Bran's Weirwood. The last time we saw him at the end of season four, he was climbing underneath, meeting the Three-Eyed Raven, and learning about what it is to be a Green Seer. It really is, from a practical standpoint, a lot like Jedi powers, but he's actually going to be one of the most powerful people on the show this year. There'll be all kinds of crazy visual effects. A lot of the exposition that we would get in prologues, epilogues, we'll probably see through his eyes. I like to think that the Tower of Joy flashback is a little more hopeful, but that kind of gets into spoilers, so we could talk about it when we actually see it. And just to clarify, the actual Tower of Joy is way down here in Dorne. So if we're going to be seeing it through Bran's eyes, that gives you an idea for the scope of his power. Moving a little further south to the wall, at the end of last season, we saw the Night's Watch revolt against Jon Snow, stab the shit out of him. In the trailer, we see that he's a corpsicle, so it seems like he's going to be riding the bench for a little while till he comes back. We don't really know how that's going to happen, but there are a lot of theories. One, that he's going to come back through some form of fire. Two, that Melisandre's going to bring him back. Even if you haven't been a book reader, you've probably heard theories about how Jon Snow is going to come back. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how they actually pull it off. They have said that season six is going off book because Winds of Winter is arguably the book that's going to bring Jon Snow back. So we don't know how George R. R. Martin is going to do it exactly, but Dan and Dave have said that they have a pretty good idea for where all the characters are headed, like where the plot is headed, without explicitly having read all of the Winds of Winter stuff that's been completed so far. So largely, all the storylines I think they're doing are going to be pretty close to the book. It's just that a lot of characters will be swapped out. And there'll be characters like Brienne, for instance, that will be featured more on the show than they are in the books. But now the surviving Night's Watch, led by Alistair Thorne, is trying to burn Jon Snow's body. The Onion Knight, Melisandre, and their supporters, there are a couple of Night's Watch that still support Jon Snow, are trying to keep them from doing that. So that's going to be the big conflict in Episode 1. Do not burn this body until Coach puts him back in the game. We also have the Wildlings. They're a little further south. They've already come through the gate, so they're south of the wall now. But one, the people of the Night's Watch really hate them. They want to get rid of them. You go further south, and most of the Lords of the North would probably want to get rid of them too. So Tormund Giantsbane and all the Wildlings, including the Giants, anybody that came south of the wall, they're next on the hit list. But you go further south, you have Sansa, Reek, the Boltons, and Brienne all running around chasing each other. As we see in the trailer, Sansa and Reek are still on the run. There's even a scene where we see them crossing a big stream. It's just part of the process of Sansa shedding that sweet summer child persona. Like she's been drugged through the mud. She's literally getting drugged through a frozen river here. She's going to be this battle-hardened person we see later in the trailer. As we see later here, though, Davos looks like he's talking to Sansa. So it looks like he's going to be doing a version of what he does in the books. So Stannis is still alive in the books. On the show, it seems like he's dead. In both cases, he was building an army to get rid of the Boltons. He had tasked Sir Davos with adding to the ranks. So Sir Davos had been riding all over the north, trying to win more men for Stannis' army. So it looks like for a big part of this season, he'll be doing that for Sansa because he's riding with her army here. A lot of you have asked which houses in the north are going to support Sansa, which houses are going to support the Boltons, because it looks like the Boltons have a really large army with a lot of different banners. So we don't know exactly how many houses they're going to do on the show. There are 47 different houses just in the north alone. There's no way the show is going to do all of them. I'm expecting maybe like 10 or 15. When we actually get to those episodes, we'll have to count all the banners. Usually that's the easiest way to do it. A little further south, you have Bear Island, where it actually looks like Sansa is right here. Ancestral home of Jorah Mormont and Jor Mormont, the old bear. The current leader of House Mormont is Mage Mormont, the sister of the old bear. But there was that funny moment during season five where Stannis got this letter from House Mormont giving him the finger. It was Lyanna Mormont, who's like a 10-year-old girl that was like, there's only one lord in the north and his name is Stark. So we'll probably at least see that little girl, even if we don't see Mage Mormon. But pretty easy to guess that they're going to be Stark loyalists. The other real big houses of the North I'm pretty sure we're going to see are the Car Starks, because we've already seen them, the Umbers, and of course the Boltons. But there'll be more than that. We'll just have to wait to count the banners when we actually see the armies lined up. What about Brienne and Podrick, though? Last seen in the North, killing Stannis. 
So at some point in the trailer, we see them way down further south in River Run. We, you know, we see the Tully fish here. That's a long ways to travel. So it remains to be seen what takes her there because technically she's still on a mission for the crown to save the surviving Stark girls. Jamie gave her her armor, gave her Oath Keeper, said find the Stark girls, help them out. So whatever she's doing here, she is talking to the surviving Tullys. So we'll probably see Blackfish again. But to get there, she's going to have to go past the twins. And we know we see the phrase in the trailer. We're going to see Walder Frey. We're going to see Lannisters hanging out with them. What I'm hoping we get is a reverse version of the Red Wedding. Just, you know, some revenge against the phrase. Because Walder Frey is one of the worst human beings in Westeros. But what about the Eerie in the Veil? Littlefinger still has control. The idea that he had during Season 5 is that he was going to play the Boltons against the Crown and try and build an army to take them out and combine his forces from the Eerie with that. So Littlefinger is still doing that. He's still trying to play the crown against the Boltons. We see him up here in the north, so eventually it looks like he'll run into Sansa again. She's probably going to be really pissed because they actually said, the writers actually said, he had no idea that Ramsay was a psychopath. So he is currently on her shit list. Over here on the left, we have the Iron Islands. Didn't see a whole lot of them during season five, but we finally have Euron Greyjoy. He's one of Balon Greyjoy's younger brothers. We see Theon's sister here. It looks like there's going to be a power struggle because it seems like they're going to do a version of the King's Moot, even though we're not getting every single Greyjoy character from the books. We haven't seen Victorian yet. That doesn't mean the show isn't going to do him. He's another one of Balon's brothers. But get really excited because Euron is just like one of the newest, most interesting characters that George R. Martin has introduced in the books in the last two books. He's one of the few characters that you don't really meet till way later in the story. Going way back over here to the salt pans, Ian McShane, all the stuff that he was talking about, about how he brings back a character, all probably going to be happening here. I won't say what character that is, but I feel like most of you, at least if you've read the books, know exactly who that is. So there's going to be more than one character that you thought was gone forever that's probably coming back this season. I know a lot of the tension is about Jon Snow. Like, is Jon Snow gone for good? Is he coming back? There are other really cool characters that are totally coming back. But that reminds me, Brotherhood Without Banners, also supposed to show up in some form. They were last seen near the crossroads, so they're another Riverlands-based storyline. But Thoros Amir, if he comes back, doesn't necessarily guarantee Lady Stoneheart, but I do think that he is coming back. But he was still alive the last time we saw him. They just didn't use him last season. Moving down to King's Landing, most of this you've seen in the trailer. Cersei just escaped the faith by confessing to her sins. She faces trial now. That just remains to be seen how that's going to play out. She has Sir Robert Strong, Zombie Mountain, protecting her. Based on the way she's presented in the trailer, it kind of seems like she thinks that she's done with this. The minute they come for her and try to drag her to trial, it seems like she's just going to sick the mountain on them. So it remains to be seen whether we'll actually see a real trial or if it'll just come to blows before that. Because you see the Faith Militant circling around Jamie in the Sept here. So they've just been teasing a big battle between the Faith, like an actual stabby battle in the streets between the Faith, the Crown, and the Tyrells. This is a Tyrell army marching in behind Jamie here at the Sept. We know from the trailer that they still have Marjorie and Loras, who are still kind of cowering in their own filth inside the cells. So they're headed for a war in the streets, the same way you see like the Wildlings and Sansa's army facing up with the Bolton army in the north. Further south, he hasn't got there yet, but you have Old Town, you have the Citadel, you have Samwell's family. Samwell and Gilly are still on the ship in the trailer, but that's where they're headed, to the Citadel, so Samwell can learn to become a maester. Hopefully he'll gain knowledge in how to fight the White Walkers. He's on a less magical version of the arc that Bran is on, gaining great knowledge, great power. If you want to say knowledge is power, you could also say that Samwell's probably going to be pretty powerful too, but the difference is Bran will have actual magical powers. Further south in Dorne, we see Alaria Sand. They will address what's going on with the Martells, even if they're not the biggest part of the season. The last we saw of them, they had poisoned Marcella as Jamie was sailing away back to King's Landing. So they're just going to follow up on that. Moving to the east now, we're way down in Slaver's Bay. So Daenerys right now is stuck in the Dothraki Sea. Tyrion and her small council are still in Marine. So they both have their own problems they have to deal with. Daenerys has to deal with the Dothraki now because the biggest thing for her is that she's been almost invincible for the last couple of seasons. She's had a big army at her back. She's had dragons. She still has Drogon because we see him in the trailer here, but she doesn't have the army at her back. So she has to learn to win over the Dothraki somehow. And it sounds like they do not give a shit about her. But we've actually learned that this Dothraki here is actually not Cal Jacko. He's actually a different character that was part of Cal Drogo's Kalisar. He was just like a high-ranking member of his Kalisar who has come to power in Drogo's absence. So he'll remember Daenerys. She has to form an alliance with him somehow because you have all these people. At some point, Daenerys will have to add them to her army. But there will be Dothraki that remember Daenerys. 
Marine is going to be really interesting because Tyrion will be drinking and knowing things. He's talking about dragon lore in the trailer. We still see the harpies running around, so they'll have an internal revolt that they still have to deal with. What I'm really hoping is, is that Tyrion, as he says, you know, dragons don't do well in captivity in the trailer, I'm hoping he releases the dragons and the dragons take care of the harpies. But the problem with that is they can't really control the dragons. They're not bonded to the dragons in the way Daenerys is. So it's kind of like him using wildfire during season two. You can use it and it's very effective, but there'll be a lot of collateral damage. If you remember that scene during Blackwater where Tyrion just unleashes the wildfire and it works perfectly, but he has that look on his face like, oh my god, what have I done? I'm expecting him to do a version of that with the dragons in the pyramid this season. Like, oh my god, what have I done? Slaver's Bay is just a big problem in general. So slavery is still a big problem. Daenerys is going to have to win over the Dothraki and unite the East before she can come to Westeros. There's still a whole lot of problems. And that's to say nothing of what's happening way further in the Northeast up here in Braavos. You have the Iron Bank and you have Arya's Faceless Men storyline. Those are like the two big things going on. The crown is still deeply in debt to the Iron Bank. That's why they sent Mace Tyrell and Marin Trant there in season five to find a way to get rid of some of the debt to the Iron Bank. So the Iron Bank, not real big fans of the crown. And also remember, they loaned a whole bunch of money to Stannis, which basically ended up getting pissed away. So the Iron Bank generally just probably hates most of Westeros. Would not be surprised at all if they then turned around and offered to fund Daenerys' campaign. Look, you take Westeros, pay us back the money we are owed. Arya's storyline is pretty straightforward. She has to learn to survive without the use of her sight. Just become a total badass. Badass Arya Ninja Season 6. But I believe that's most of the big storylines. I'm sure there's still a couple of big questions you guys have about certain characters or, you know, predictions about where things are headed. Dan and Dave have said they have like a solid 10 to 15 hours left of story to tell, which is why, you know, there's been a lot of talk about them shortening the last two seasons. They just confirmed they're going to do season seven, but HBO did not say how many episodes would be in season seven. They just said that it was picked up for season seven. So they're still figuring that out. They might make that announcement after season six is done because they want most people to focus on season six. They don't want everyone to be worried about what's going to be happening after. But let me know in the comments, which of these storylines are you most excited about? What's going on with Daenerys in the east? What's happening in the north? Or what's happening further south near King's Landing? Those are really like the three big hotspots, even though there are a lot more storylines that are actually going on. But the important stuff, Game of Thrones, Sunday night, episode one. If you've been watching it the last couple of seasons, I just, I recommend, you know, wherever you live in the world, Use whatever method you've been using to watch it to watch it this season. If you have HBO Now or like a streaming option, you can use that. The thing about HBO Now that's different from HBO Go is that I think you have to wait like an hour after it airs on TV to watch it on HBO Go. HBO Now lets you watch it immediately the minute it drops, so you don't have to wait no matter what time zone you're in. But the thing is, is that even if you subscribe to the HBO channel, you still have to pay for HBO Now. I think it's like 14 bucks a month or 15 bucks but they do have a 30-day trial, so you could sign up for like the 30-day trial, watch the first couple of episodes of Game of Thrones, and then just bail out if you don't want to pay for it. So however you watch it, I'll be posting my videos after the episodes air, so they'll be available Sunday nights. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I do a weekly giveaway. I'll be doing bonus videos on Sundays. This is kind of my bonus video for this week, so my next Game of Thrones video will be that episode one video. But the week after that, it'll be like a bonus topic, so I'll be talking about The Long Night, White Walkers, anything you guys want, anything that's interesting and relevant to what's going on during the season. So I will go ahead and start the new round of the giveaway now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. It's real simple. I announce the winner whenever I post my Q&A videos. That'll be on Monday. Typically the Q&A videos are just, you know, for answering like the biggest questions that everyone has or if there's anything that I missed during episode one. But it's going to be a really fun season. I don't think it's going to go quite as off book as people think it is. They're circling back around and grabbing a couple storylines from books four and five that they skipped in previous seasons. But there will be a couple things where they'll push forward. Jon Snow and Daenerys are good examples of two characters that have already exhausted their book storyline. So they'll be going to new territory. So whenever we get to that stuff, I'll just, I'll mention if they're doing a storyline from the books or if it's something that's totally new. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I try to assume that not everybody's read the book. So I will try to be pretty careful about how I mention book stuff. While you guys wait for my next video to post, you can click here or here for the last big Game of Thrones trailers. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.